Hi, and welcome back to the Woodpine Woodwork Shop. Today, we're gonna to talk about how I just upgraded my joiner from straight knives to a segmented cutter head. Let's check it out. So the joiner comes with straight knives, and there's three of them like this in the head. And these are great, there's nothing wrong with these. But recently, segmented heads, like these little carbide inserts, uh, have become more and more popular. These are really efficient, they last a really long time, and I've wanted to make this upgrade for some time. Let's talk for a second about why a joiner is important and what it does. Uh, a joiner basically makes a surface of a board flat and then it can make another surface square to that first one or at an angle if you choose. And these segmented cutter heads do that very efficiently and they leave a super clean cut. So this is a piece of white oak. This is an example of some rough sawn white oak here. And this is uh, just right off the joiner without any sanding or anything like that. This is a super smooth surface, super clean and it allowed me to get into further processing steps. I chose to do my joiner first because I do a lot of work with rough sawn lumber and I wanted to break this down as efficiently as I can. Plus, these cutter heads will stay sharp a lot longer than straight blades. Straight blades tend to need um, care or sharpening more often. And I know a lot of people say that they've gotten these cutter heads and they've never had to, you can rotate each one of these inserts four times. So you essentially have four fresh cutting surfaces. Um, so a lot of people say that these last you know, way longer than uh, uh, the straight blades. So I'm hoping to get some additional tool life out of this as well as superior um, surfaces to work with in, you know, in processing these boards down. All right, so at the high level, the main things you gotta know is you got the in-feed table and the out-feed table, and then you've got the cutter head right here in the middle. So to make this upgrade, you simply lower the, the uh, out-feed table down, lower the in-feed table down, and that exposes the cutter head the cutter head is held in with two bolts from the underside and you've got to clear some things out to get access to it but you basically take those bolts out and the whole thing comes off you obviously have to take the fence off too to get to everything but that is fundamentally how this upgrade happens One. now this joiner that you're looking at here this is a delta six inch joiner it's a model 37-190 uh, it's a very popular very common model of a joiner uh, yours might be different, but I'm, I think the, the overall steps for making this upgrade would be fairly similar. So I talked about you know, getting the tables out of the way, lower them down to expose the cutter head, obviously take the fence off. And one of the things that I ran into when I was getting ready to do this, this job is right back here, uh, there's a couple of nuts and set screws. And you have to loosen these up before you really move this table down. Uh, there's an adjustment uh, screw down here with a knob on it that lowers the table down but before you do that you just have to loosen these bolts and set screws and then everything will move real nice if you're wrenching on it real hard you feel like you got to go get a bigger wrench you probably want to stop and just just see if there's anything else that needs to be loosened up so um, do take care not put too much torque on these when you're when you're disassembling your machine now with regard to taking things apart i chose to probably take more apart than i needed to because i wanted to clean things as i was going along um, so I did end up taking the motor off and the, uh, the dust chute. Uh, and so there's just some nuts and bolts that hold these things together. This is the block that I was talking about right here. This holds the bearing of the head itself. <laughs> and this is, this is the bolt down here. There's a bolt that goes right through here, one on the front and one on the back side. So in order to get access to this nut, I had to take this bracket off into here. Uh, so you may have to take some things apart. Again, I took this as an opportunity to clean up the machine a little bit. And then while I had everything apart, um, I took the opportunity to use a piece of Scotch-Brite <laughs> and some rust remover and clean up the, the fences and the table as much as I could. You know, got to do that periodically anyway. So I just said, hey, if I'm making this upgrade, let's go ahead and do that. Um, this is a Shelix head. So I got this from Bird Tool. And they make all sorts of different cutter heads. Uh, this one matched my machine. I'm sure they have one that matches yours. Not sponsored in any way. I just picked this uh, because they're, uh, you know, made locally and uh, they've got a good reputation. So. Let's start with a little bit of unboxing. So I have to say that the cutter head was shipped uh, in an excellent packaging. Everything was nice and protected. No risk of damage here. I did order a few extra carbide inserts just for the future, just to have them. And they send you a nice little tool to uh, to take the um, the carbide inserts, you know, take them off and put them back on. Once we have the cutter head unpacked, then I proceed to start tearing the machine down. Here I'm removing the fence and some of the bracketry that 
just as in the way there. I'm just clearing things out so I can move the in-feed and out-feed tables down. Again, just taking my time looking to see what, where are things connected. I chose to take the motor off. Now the motor is pretty heavy, so you want to be careful. You don't hurt yourself. Use some wood blocks or something to kind of prop it up um, and make this a little bit easier for yourself. Like, trying to hold it in your hand is, is going to be difficult. So we've got the motor out. And then I unloosen, or loosened up all the nuts and bolts that hold the dust chute um, in place just to, again, to get my hands in there and make sure I can get at the uh, the bolts that hold the bearing blocks to the frame of the joiner itself. And we'll see that here in just a second. There's the, the nut and the bolt that holds the bearing block to the frame. Once you loosen those up, then the head assembly just pulls right out. You got to be careful here because the knives are still sharp in it and you could cut yourself, so do be careful. The next thing I did after I got the cutter head out was to take this occasion to do a little cleanup on the cast iron surfaces. So I used some rust remover and some scotch brite and scrubbed them down real good. I think I did this a couple times just to try to you know, really clean up the surface. It had been a while since I cleaned up this machine, so I took that time. And then I followed up with a, a coat of paste wax just to try to protect it. Uh, you know, from getting corroded again, and also provide some lubrication for, you know, when I do the milling work after that. So I did the in-feed and out-feed tables as well as the fence at this time while I had everything torn apart and it was easy to clean and I could get access to everything in just an easy way. At this point, it was time to take the old cutter head apart as in take the pulley off and the, um, the bearing blocks. Now these are pressed on. And they, you know, you can't just pull them off. So you have to use a gear puller for this. Um, I happen to have one, but if you don't, then you can uh, check out one of your local auto parts stores. A lot of them have a rent-a-tool program. You can go get one of these kind of specialty tools you might need, you know, once, but maybe it doesn't justify, um, you know, the purchase of a tool. Um, once you get the pulley off, the pulley's pressed on. You know, it's got a key and a couple of set screws. Once you pull it off, then you can focus your attention on... Um, the, the bearing blocks. Now, none of this is very difficult. You just have to take your time and go slow with it. Um, when you use the, the gear puller, as long as you can get a good kind of a good purchase on the pulley or the bearing blocks, um, it'll come right off. The trick, just like I said, is just taking your time and not trying to force anything too hard. So here I'm pulling off the bearing blocks, and these are parts I have to reuse. I took the knives out of the cutter head at this point too, because I was worried about slicing on my hands. So just trying to be careful with that. So there's the bearing blocks, and then I just clean them up a little bit with a uh, brass brush. And the next thing we're going to do then is uh, install those onto the new cutter head. So here I just gently tried to use a hammer and see that it wasn't going on. And I realized that the, um, the blocks that the cutter head is shipped in was a perfect fit for that. So you can use that shipping uh, block and install the bearing blocks onto the new cutter head without really any trouble. That worked great for me. And here's a quick uh, look at the actual bolts that hold the cutter head to the machine, just so again, so you can have a kind of an idea of what you're what you're looking for. All right, so everything's put together. Let's see how it works. All right, one last thing I want to say is that the shavings are pretty cool, actually, with this new head. Uh, they tend to be, you know, nice little curls, uh, which is not what I was used to seeing with straight knives. Um, so that's just an observation. This is white oak. I haven't tried this in other species yet. Very much looking forward to it and very glad that I made this upgrade. I think the next thing for me would be probably do the same thing with my planer. Um, but this, uh, this was a great update, great upgrade. Very happy I did this. And I encourage you, if you've been on the fence about it, to you know to do this. This will greatly uh, enhance the pleasure of your um, milling process as you're getting your wood ready to go for your projects.